Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing? I have a lot of questions all the time asking me to show my recipe for my children's waffles and pancakes. I make this every week. So let's get into it and I'll show you what I do. Now we use sado, which is basically wild yeast. This is what it looks like. I put this in the fridge when I mix and I just keep it. I don't know how to explain sado. It's a proper video I have to do about that. Anyway, this is a sado starter. I've had this for a few years now. I just thought it there. People that are professionals will tell you about hydration and all that. Can you see the bit of yeast on top there? Yeah, it's been sitting in my fridge for maybe a couple of weeks. I think I didn't do pancakes 10 days ago. So now I have a bit of warm water, not hot water, just room temperature. So don't use hot water, otherwise you will kill your sardo. This is an acorn sardo starter. So I have acorn flour, but I have used other flours in the past and it has been fine. So what you have to do, you have to activate it. Basically the yeasts have gone dormant. So what I have to do now is activate it. That's why I used a bit of lukewarm water, not hot water. To activate it is just to wake it up to cause them to start bubbling and yeah, cause some rise to happen. So I just add enough flour to give me a paste, if that makes sense. Enough to give me a paste. I've run out of my flour. I, guys, I don't measure anything, so I'm showing you exactly how I do it. Otherwise, it will look as though I'm giving you a different recipe from what I do. The reason I don't measure is simply because I'm used to this. I have no troubles mixing it and knowing how it comes out. It's almost like making a soup or stew. I wasn't taught to measure things, so I don't. Only, obviously, things like cake, you have to be specific with measurements for me. And maybe bread. I, and I'm not great at bread, probably because I don't measure. So people that are great with sourdough breads will show you. So I've just made this into a little bit of a paste. And I'm going to set this aside for a few hours to basically start bubbling. That's just what it means to reactivate the sourdough yeast. Okay. If I'm in a hurry, which I am today, I want to get this ready in less than 24 hours. Sardo is something you don't rush because it's natural yeast. It takes its time to form. I would also go ahead and prepare the flour today. So otherwise, normally it will be done the next day. So we have a bowl. For your benefit, I will weigh this. So just for your sakes, I will be using the scale today. Um, to be honest, like I did say, no need to weigh. So we've got a skill at zero, zero that again. So it's at zero and I'm using spelt. I don't like using whole wheat, but I also do use whole wheat when I can't find other grains. So I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for half a kilo. Okay, 500 grams. To be honest, I eyeball these things. <laughs> so 500 grams. And then I'm gonna use a bit of Tef, okay, brown tef, make it 400. So you see what I do? I decide sort of in the middle of this thing, oh, I'm gonna change one because I don't wanna use up all my tef, guys. This is my reason here, not for any other reason. Tef actually tastes nice. Um, it's a little bit more expensive as well. So obviously I'm saving it. <laughs> I'm saving the tef. Okay, we've got tef. And the last one will be some oatmeal. Now, my oatmeal, I usually use, I buy pinhead and I'm going to make a meal. I'm going to blend it. So put this aside. That's it, blended. And I'll just pop that in here for you to see. Can you see the difference in colors? And these are all whole grains. Nothing's been taken out of them. So this is why I mix the variety as well for your gut microbiome. Sorry about all the pounding and then we're just gonna do the rest the other second half of our oats so all in all we've just got about one and a half kilos roughly haven't we and then we just get some water and mix nothing else we're just gonna mix this with water and let it sit until everything is ready now i think i've got too much in here so this is it i have to get a different container so let's just measure the water we're adding to yeah one and a half kilo so i've zeroed that and i'm just gonna go ahead i think a liter of water will do this thing let's see because we don't want too much or too little just about a liter 
Now, this is because these are whole grains. They have the whole, the whole grain included. So they absorb a lot more water than if it was white flour. So if you're using white flour, your water requirements will be totally different. And the reason I'm not adding too much water here now is because tomorrow I will be adding some eggs. So actually, should we add eggs now? I just have two eggs here, which I'll add. We don't eat too much eggs, okay? Um, still animal protein at the end of the day. So you can see this is a bit thick. Um, I feel I need to add a little bit more water. So this is where your your you have to use your sixth sense and just check the consistency because as this thing absorbs the water, it could get thicker and expand. So you just add a little bit more water each time. You could also use a mixer, but I find because I'm not mixing this for long, I find it's easy to just use a spatula. Can you see that's a drop? You just want it not pouring, dropping. Okie dokie, guys. So this is four hours later. Just over four hours later. And now this is what our sourdough starter is looking like. All nice and bubbly. So I'm going to add that in here. This is what is the yeast. Now, if you don't have sourdough, just use yeast. But I don't use yeast. I use sourdough. And this is how I do it. When I finish, this is what is left, literally there. And then I'm just going to reactivate it. Just add some more flour and water. And it's going to look like it looked in the beginning. Just a little paste. That's it. We're also going to add some sugar. I'm just using a quarter cup. I might add some more sugar tomorrow. But we don't use a lot of sugar. And this is it for tonight. So this is what I'll do. Mix it all up. Now, can you see how... It's no longer as dropping. It's more runny, but that's fine. This texture still is fine. We'll just mix everything together, cover it, and let it sit overnight. 2,000 years later. It's the very next day, so we're talking about a full 12 hours, roughly. This has been... Look at that. Can you see what that looks like? Bubbles. Yeah. This is sado at its best and then i'll also show you what the starter looks like can you see the starter so i all i did yesterday was i added some more flour there and i just let it sit so it's quite yeasty and this is going to be sour something i found that helps reduce the sour taste if um, your kids are fussy about it being sour, if you're having sourdough, that is. Sodium bicarb, bicarbonate of soda. So I find if I add a little bit of that, oh, I should just make that, make sure I don't get lumps. So probably about a teaspoon. It just reduces the, the sour taste because obviously it's an alkaline. It reduces the acidity, but then the sourdough has still done its job. So if you're having sourdough and you just can't stand the sour taste that is something to try so the next thing i do i turn on my <clears throat> i've turned on my waffle maker and also my pans i have two pans i use cast iron and i also use this this is not non-stick this is an anodized pan so it doesn't peel non-stick is not safe for you um just in case you use that but obviously um whatever you have to use be careful just don't use too high heat so I now go ahead and add things that I want in there. I'm adding a little bit of vanilla. It's up to you. Um, entirely up to you. Some nutmeg. It's just nutmeg. I made the powder myself. I like using my hands. Sorry. This is how I cook at home. Um, sometimes I measure. But probably about a tablespoon for the amount. A bit of cinnamon. <clears throat> cinnamon as well and then we'll go ahead and add some more sugar so last night we added a quarter cup of sugar we're gonna add another quarter cup of sugar you can add some vegetable oil if you wanted you can also not bother adding um at this point i feel it's a bit runny the consistency feels a bit runny 
also i will be adding some flour now obviously this is not going to be sad though this one won't be fermented but we have more fermented flour than we don't so i'm not worried too much about that so this is why i say i don't use measurements i go with my eyes remember yesterday it was dropping and today is running now i have a sprayer bottle i just put some oil in here i put whatever cooking oil i have and then i'm just gonna spray my pan so you don't need a lot of oil obviously and then the waffle iron is also ready let's go ahead and put our sometimes i test this thing on my pan before i cook but i think i have enough gluten here so it's not gonna be crumbly it will stick together so that's just when i don't use enough gluten because like teff hasn't got gluten and oat has got protein but not necessarily gluten but they are quite sticky so and we also have egg which is a binder so i won't have trouble having this thing stick now see i've just put enough in there spray the top a bit more remember we're trying to make this really healthy so we're not using as much processed flour as possible as much whole flours okay that's what we're aiming for so just go ahead and put it in the the pan okay first to be ready is our waffle so we're just gonna have a look and can you see perfect i use one of these chopsticks and try and get it out for some reason it's stuck there a bit that's it the first one always feels a bit sticky but look at that perfect so we're just gonna go ahead and make the next batch so this is why i use the waffle iron more not necessarily because it tastes different but it just makes my job a lot quicker the next batch is ready and this time it comes out quite nice and easy okay we know that we've got protein in oats in the spelt but sometimes i also add some protein powder so this is like a plant protein i just add it honestly it depends on what i have in store i just saw that i have this in the fridge and i was going to add so i just added a few scoops there that just gives them that extra protein boost um generally i wouldn't ferment the protein powder overnight but some people have issues with gas with hemp protein so if you do or pea protein then i'll just skip it but this is just giving us extra fortification if that helps i just go based on what i have at home nothing nothing fancy to be honest so just add it that in just give it make sure i have a good mix okay we've come to the last waffle i think it's probably taking me 20 minutes today which is not bad so that's the all the waffles let's turn this iron off turn that off and the pancakes we've got a few on the side there so we've got probably equal got a couple more waffles there as well and this one is cooked as you can see Whew, that's hot and that is just the last bit i've got I'm just gonna pop that there so guys thank you so much for watching if you've watched till this point i hope this video has answered your questions i hope it's been helpful leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know if this is something you'll try it's really easy like i said obviously it takes the initial rise time but after that you're good to go so our waffle and pancakes are ready and this will be enough for the week actually let me show you where the other ones are it's a big tray um so that's the pancakes and a few more waffles there that will be enough for the week it will be in my freezer and the kids and hobby would have it as a couple of meals in the week and a couple of snacks during the week as well so if you've enjoyed this video if it's given you any sort of value give us a thumbs up let me know what you think let me know what you'd like me to show you next time the simple ways i make my kids breakfast and meals healthier than the conventional shop bought one so this is what i do 
Um, obviously, if you want to mill a lot of your grains from scratch, it's better. But I just buy them and I mill them and it's a lot easier for me that way. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you in another video. Don't forget to thumbs up, smash the notification bell so you know when next I upload a new video. And thank you once again. Bye-bye.